Representative Lambert is recognized for a parliamentary inquiry. Madam Chairman, I would uh, like to know what the procedure is for moving a petition as listed in the calendar to committee. Petitions that are sponsored by representatives um, pursuant to the House rules that were adopted on our opening day, um, particularly changes to Rules 4 and 18, would um, the, require that the clerk reads a summary and the speaker can either refer those to committee or simply have them retained on file. A member may make a motion to uh, refer a petition that is sponsored by a representative to a committee, uh, and that would happen if the House so ordered. Excellent. Madam, Chair, uh, Madam Speaker, under Rule um, 4, would it, would it not be appropriate um, for me to make a motion for the House to direct the um, would it not be appropriate for me to make a motion to direct that request of our citizens to a committee? Um, as I said, a petition that is sponsored by a representative that has gone through the process at OLS will be read by summary by the clerk. Um, I don't believe that you are referring to one of the petitions that was today read by summary by the clerk. Madam Speaker. Would you, the member is recognized for a further parliamentary inquiry. Excellent. Thank you. Under uh, my understanding of our House procedures, um, the House actually uses past precedent. Our, is, there, uh, is there a parliamentary inquiry Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm trying to understand, based on our adopted House rules, Mason's procedures, and the guidelines of our House, we use the um, New Hampshire Constitution as the foremost uh, mechanism by which this House operates. Under Article 32 of the New Hampshire Constitution, it says that the people have the right in orderly and peaceably mannered to assemble and to consult upon the common good, to give instructions to their representatives, and to request of the legislative, legislative body by petition or remonstrance, redress of grievances, wrongs done by them, and the grievances they suffer. Also, under uh, Article 31, it says the meeting and meetings of the legislature, the purpose for what purpose the legislature shall assemble for the redress of public grievances and for making such laws as the public good may require. We have before us a petition of 112 individuals who have properly formed a request and petition. Are you telling me that there is no method to get that petition before a committee to be heard? Uh, no, that is not what I am saying, Representative. What I have said is that petitions that are sponsored by representatives will be read by summary and may be filed or referred to a committee um, and the House, unless otherwise ordered by the House. The manner in which the legislature uh, deals with redress of grievances is to file bills. And if there is a member in the legislature that would like to file a bill, as uh, we all know, every member can file a bill. Um, and that is the manner in which uh, that would happen. That's how our House rules address it. Mad Madam Chairman, I would like to make a motion that we, as a body, the the member was not recognized for a motion. If your motion is about the, the petition to which you refer, that motion would not be in order. Excellent. I would like to challenge the order of the chair. Um, the member has challenged the order of, of the uh, ruling of the chair. Uh, will members please take their seats? Who's requested a roll call? Representative Valancourt requests a roll call. Is that sufficiently seconded? It is not sufficient. It is not su sufficiently seconded. Okay. I will take that this time, but when I ask for seconds, you need to stand up right away if you intend to second the motion. This will be a roll call vote. The question, 
the question before the House is on the ruling of the chair relative to petitions. Uh, the question is, uh, notwithstanding the appeal, shall the ruling of the chair be upheld? Uh, the chair recognizes the member from Manchester, Representative Valancourt, to speak to the motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. I rise to speak in favor of the ruling of the chair. And I do so as someone who has been known on occasion to challenge the chair in the past. However, when we go to challenge a chair, it should be based upon hard and fast information and proof that we are correct. This whole affair embarrasses me, and it should embarrass each and every one of us. This is an attempt by a group that is so-called free speech to silence the free speech of somebody. To compound that with this type of motion is frankly sad and embarrassing. I ask you to vote to uphold the ruling of the chair so we can get on to the business of this house. The uh, question, the question before the house is notwithstanding the challenge shall the ruling of the chair be upheld. This is a roll call vote. If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. The chair recognizes Representative Lambert for a parliamentary inquiry. Madam Chair, thank you. I'm sorry, Madam Speaker. I'm so sorry. I'm a little nervous. I'm unaccustomed to challenging the speaker. Um, Madam Speaker, if you believe as I believe that our job is to represent the public and to uphold our rules. And Madam Speaker, if you actually agree with my interpretation of Rule 4, which says referral of bills, etc., to committees, the Speaker shall refer all bills, resolutions, memorials, accounts, and other matters coming before the House to the appropriate committees unless otherwise ordered by the House, that would be the membership, the Speaker may refer the same jointly to two committees or a special committee. There is no restriction in Rule 4 the, that says will a member bill. Please, will the member please suspend? The member yes, was recognized for a parliamentary inquiry. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I'll get my phrasing right. Madam Speaker, if you were to interpret this the same way that I do, which is that a request from our citizens is a constitutional requirement of this legislature to hear whether we agree with them or not, would you actually press the um, red button to overturn the ruling of the chair so that I may bring a motion forward to actually forward a petition from our citizens so that it may have the public hearing that it deserves. Thank you. The question before the House is notwithstanding the ruling of the chair, shall the ruling be upheld? If you're in favor of upholding the ruling, you'll, I mean, you'll be pressing the green button. If you're opposed, you'll be pressing the red button. The chair recognizes Representative Richardson for a parliamentary inquiry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. If I know that the issue of uh, petitions was thoroughly debated when we adopted our rules, and I know that uh, we removed petitions from Rule 4 and adopted a new Rule 18, uh, and if I know that this petition uh, that the uh, representative is referring to uh, has not been sponsored by a single legislator in this body, would I now support the ruling of the chair by pushing the green button? Thank you. The question, be this, the question before the House is notwithstanding the appeal, shall the ruling of the chair be upheld? If you're in favor of, of upholding, you will press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll be pressing the red button. Voting stations are open for 30 seconds. The House will be attentive to the state of the vote, 276 having voted in the affirmative, 77 in the negative. The ruling is upheld.